Hi, everybody. My name is Darren Kerr. I'm one of the instructors on the Mark Meldrum CFA course here at Serify. I work with Richie and Mac on the product, and I wanted to share a quick video with you all today because today, on Thursday, June 26th, 2025, the CFA Level 1 exam results have been released, specifically the results for the May 2025 exam cycle. You can see here that the pass rate for the May 2025 exam was 45%. The February 2025 pass rate was also 45%. And these pass rates are a little bit better than what we have seen overall in terms of a pass rate average for the level one exam. Over the last 10 years, the average pass rate for level one has been 41%. And if you look over time from the very beginning, when the CFA Institute was founded and began doing CFA exams back in 1963, all the way up through until May of 2025, the average pass rate from all of that time is also 41%. So we're looking at pass rates here this year that have been a little bit above that overall average. Now this information is available on the CFA Institute's website. They keep a file that they update every exam cycle with the pass rates for each level. This goes all the way back again to 1963 when the CFA Institute began and when they started doing tests. Now, if we scroll down and we take a look at these pass rates and the evolution of them over time, we can see not just the pass rates, but the number of students or candidates that took that exam, how many passed, how many failed, and then that pass rate. Now, if I continue down through, you'll see here that in, in the columns that show for level one, pass rates were around that kind of low 40 percentile for many, many years. Then we had a dip. This dip occurred uh, in 2021. So kind of coming out of the disruption created by the COVID pandemic, pass rates really fell off. We saw in May 2021, a pass rate that dropped down to 25%. Uh, and it's, they stayed in the 20s that year, 22%, 26%, 27%. Then they started to rebound a bit in 2022 into the mid 30s. Um, they got up to more like the high 30s in 2023. Uh, and then they really started to recover back to historical norms in 2024. So that's when we started seeing pass rates that were back into the 40s again here for level one. So you can see here in 2024, 44, 46, 44, 43%. And then our two pass rates that have now been reported for 2025, each at 45%. Now, if I scroll across and just take a look at the pass rates for the other levels, uh, and I'm using really the, the averages here over the last 10 years as my point of reference, but basically the 41% pass rate for level one is the lowest of the three. You have a 45% 10-year average pass rate for level two, and a 51% 10-year average pass rate for level three. So let's think about that. Why would the level one pass rate be lower than the pass rates for these other exams? Well, I think it's important to realize that everybody that's taking the level two exam already passed level one, and everybody that's taking the level three exam has already passed both levels one and two. So when you get into level two and especially into level three, we're talking about a candidate pool that's pretty good. These are good students. They know how to study. They understand the rigors of the CFA exams, and they're really there to focus on making it all the way through and earning their charter. When you're dealing with level one candidates, certainly some of those candidates will go all the way through and earn their charters, but level one serves as a filter. It filters out students that are serious and will make it through. And it filters out, you know, it'll, I should say, filter out the ones that are not serious and not make it through. Uh, and the ones that do kind of make it through that filter and on to the other levels. Now, why does that happen? Well, when you're dealing with level one, you start to realize this is oftentimes an exam that's different from anything that you've taken before. I can speak to my own experiences. I can't speak to everybody's. But when I was a level one candidate, I realized well, each individual topic here isn't that hard. It's not easy. It's, it's high level stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's certainly advanced level material, but it's not that rigorous to where 
I didn't think I'd be able to pass if I had a test just focused on that one particular topic. You know, for an example, I used to study in university. I was an accounting major. I studied accounting. When I got to the level one exam and started studying for financial statement analysis, I realized I saw a lot of this material back when I was studying in university. And again, if the exam was just purely focused on that, I think I would have handled it just fine. Um, but putting all of those topics along with FSA into that same exam, quantitative methods, economics, equity, fixed income, derivatives, alternative investments, portfolio management, among others, that's what makes it tough. You've got all of these different topics being tested on one exam. So you have to be ready for everything that's covered in that curriculum all at once. So a lot of times what ends up happening with students is they're not able to devote the amount of time that they would like to devote to their studies, and they don't feel fully prepared when they go in and take the exam to varying degrees. Some might get to that level where they feel pretty well prepared, but a lot of times candidates will go in wishing that they had prepared differently, wishing that they had put in more effort or done things in a more efficient way with regards to their preparation. So, and, and again, this varies to, to large degrees in terms of the level of preparedness. So you have a lot of candidates that don't pass that will walk away objectively or honestly thinking, I didn't deserve to. You know, I didn't, I didn't study enough. There are too many topics. I went deep enough into one or two, but I didn't go deep enough into the others. And I just simply was not well enough prepared. So again, it serves as a filter. Now, with regards to that, some of those students will pick themselves up and they'll move on. They'll try again. And a lot of times they can make it all the way through to the end, meaning getting through level three and becoming CFA charter holders, but not all of them. You know, there's a lot of students also that will not pass this exam and decide this is not for them. So yet again, it's a filter. And that's why the pass rates tend to be the lowest here at level one. And the other thing that we're not seeing when I was sharing my screen and showing that file that the CFA Institute keeps updated with all of the pass rates across all of the three levels, what that shows is the number of students that actually took the exam, how many passed, how many failed per level. But what it doesn't show is the number of students that registered for the exam that didn't end up showing up to even take the exam. That's another pretty big number, especially at level one. I don't know what it actually is because that's not a data point that the CFA Institute releases, but anecdotally, we have heard over the years that up to 20% of the candidates that sign up and pay the CFA Institute to take one of these exams don't end up showing up to actually take the exam. That means they don't show up in the pass-fail number. They're not part of that percentage that we're sharing with you all. A lot of times these candidates are in level one because once they get into it and realize the effort that's going to be required to make it through to the end and pass this exam, they at some point will give up. So yet again, as I've said a couple of times now, level one can serve as a filter. Now, as we move on and say, all right, well, what happens if you did pass? What's next? Well, obviously level two, level two comes next. And when should you take it? Well, it's offered three times per year, May, August, November. Uh, if you wanted to do a pretty quick turnaround for those that are, you know, successful candidates that pass the May exam, you could still do the November exam, or you could be maybe looking to 2026 for your level two exam. Um, it depends on the candidate, it depends on what you got going on in your life in terms of how much time you can dedicate to studying here. But what's important to know is that when you get into level two, the level of difficulty increases significantly. The content set goes much deeper. The questions are harder. It's gonna take longer to flip through the pages and read the material and really absorb it and know it. So it, it's going to be a bit of a different type of studying compared to what you did to have success on the level one exam. Also, the actual questions are formatted in a different way. In the level one exam, you had these standalone multiple choice questions, but in level two, you're going to be introduced to what we call the item set format. These are sets of questions, four question sets specifically, where you have some information, text, tables, charts, things of that nature, and then you have to answer a set of four questions related to that given information. So it's a different approach, it's a different type of test, there are half as many questions. So usually time management isn't such a big deal on the actual test compared to let's say the level one exam, 
But again, the material goes much deeper. It's going to take a much more rigorous approach to being fully prepared for level two compared to level one. So you're going to need to figure out as a successful level one candidate when you should sign up for and start to focus on taking your level two exam. Now, what happens though if you didn't pass? What happens next? Well, unfortunately, it's a tough day, especially if you felt thought you might have passed and you're now quite disappointed with the result. A lot of times students that don't pass realize that they didn't pass in the very moment that they're taking the test, but sometimes students feel like they might have passed, maybe not. And then as the exam result comes out, uh, if it is a fail or did not pass result, then obviously they're quite disappointed. Now, what we want you to try to do is kind of move beyond that. Think about this objectively and realize why you're doing this. What's the whole point of doing these CFA exams? You want to become a CFA charter holder, and that is something that can provide you benefit for many, many, many years, for a long, long career, decades, really. So you got to keep thinking big picture and realize that it's okay. You know, to have a quick setback here in level one, you can still recover from this and move on and make it through to level two and go on beyond, go, go beyond and become a charter holder uh, soon thereafter. Now, to do that, you have to be objective and use your score report that they provide for you in a constructive way. So you're going to see in that score report your overall score compared to a minimum passing score. So how far away were you from actually passing this exam? And then you'll also be able to see your performance by topic. There are 10 topic areas in the level one exam. You'll be able to see where you were okay and also where you weren't. And obviously there, when you identify those weak areas, those are gonna be your areas of focus when you start studying for your level one exam the next time. Also, you wanna re-examine how you study. Were you efficient with how you studied? I can speak from my own experiences and say that I was not always efficient with how I studied. Sometimes I had my efficient study uh, hours and then other times a lot less so. And you might be able to identify when you're being efficient and when you're not being efficient with regards to your own studies. So you got to rethink everything and understand what works, what doesn't, what's a good efficient use of time with regards to studying and what's not. You can read the material, you can watch the videos, and a lot of times you do need to do those things to absorb the material. But you also need to incorporate lots of practice into your studying so that you're actually ready to take the exam uh, comes test day. It's a test with lots of multiple choice questions. So you need to be practicing that style of question throughout your studies and not just in the final couple of weeks before you actually go and take the exam. So really think about how you studied. Did you practice enough throughout or was that something that you waited on doing until it was almost too late? Also, in terms of test taking technique, how did you actually approach the session? You know, there's two sessions for each of these exams. How did you actually approach the usage of the time during the session? This is something that you can work on as well with regards to the, the mock exams or the simulated exams that you take as you get closer and closer to a test date. There are obviously psychological and emotional considerations here if you didn't pass, but do realize that most successful candidates do not pass every level on the first attempt. If you look at the percentages, most people do not pass on the first attempt, all three levels. Some do, but they are the exception to the rule. So do realize that there are lots of candidates that have become CFA charter holders that have failed at least one of these exams. I know of a candidate that failed multiple times, um, you know, in, in level one and level two and level three even. Um, just kept staying with it, and he eventually became a charter holder. Uh, I, I know of a couple, actually. I, I know of a few, to be honest, that have unsuccess, you know, had unsuccessful results, but stayed with it and continued on and became charter holders. So like I had mentioned a moment ago, remember why you're doing this. You want to become a charter holder. There's got to be a reason why you started this journey. What I would encourage you all to do in this moment, if you were not able to pass, Rethink that and realize that this is something that can provide you benefit for many, many, many years, many years. If you're in your 20s or even in your 30s and you're doing this now, you might have a career that goes into your 60s. You know, you, you might be working for another 30 or 40 years even, and it would be.
be really nice to have the CFA charter and those letters by your name for all those years ahead you know, in your future career. So just be, be aware of that, that this is going to provide a lot of benefit, not just in the short term, but throughout many years to come. And for those that are thinking about doing this for the first time, the one, the few things that we would say here, just to share a quick uh, few thoughts, register and start your studying early. Do so with a structured plan and don't just be reading the book or watching the videos um, without doing some practice incorporated in there. You want to do something more active. So read a little, watch some video, but then do some practice questions from one of the QBanks. The Meldrum site has a great QBank. The CFA Institute's learning ecosystem has a lot of practice material there as well. But you need to be doing that type of active work along with the, the, the more passive style of studying that you might see from watching a video or just kind of reading through a curriculum book. So really important to understand how to study for this exam. And these are things that we can share with you and we do share with the candidates here at the Meldrum course over here at Serify that are with us doing their CFA prep. So I think I've shared enough for now. Today was an interesting day. We got to see the results for the level one. Uh, in, in the next week or two, we're gonna see the level two results coming out now for the May exam. So we'll get a gauge as to how those were as well. And we'll be back, I'm sure, with some sort of update at that time. But if you have interest, please <clears throat> reach out to us and get in contact. We are here to help. CFA candidates that have interest in becoming charter holders. And we've had a lot of success over the years helping those candidates achieve that goal. Goodbye for now, everybody. And we look forward to seeing you all, hopefully, in the course.